And then for lesson number three, we are going to talk about sexual reproduction, meaning to say the involvement of sex cells. So in sexual reproduction, we have the sperm cells and the egg cells, or the female part and the male part. Okay, it involves gadagamits. So this is the process in which new organisms are produced by combining the genetic information from two individuals of different sexes. So ge the genetic information is carried on chromosomes within the nucleus of specialized sex cells called gametes. So gametes, germ cells, sex cells, they are all the same. So in males, these gametes are called sperms. And in females, these gametes are called eggs. During sexual reproduction, the two gametes join together in a fusion. The process is known as fertilization. So, to create the zygote, which is the precursor to an embryo offspring, taking half of its DNA from each of its parents. So, in humans, so pag pinag-uusapan natin ang tao, we have 46 chromosomes, 23 chromosomes from the mother, and then 23 chromosomes from the father. Then the combination of these chromosomes produces an offspring that is similar both its mother and father but it's not identical to either. So meaning to say, nang galing yung 23 chromosomes sa mother, nang galing yung 23 chromosomes sa father. So when it combines, what happens is that you are a new organism. You came from your parents but you are not entirely the same as your parent. Meaning to say, you are the combination of two genes but a total different person or individual. Okay? So, it's we cannot find you either of the two. So, not just only in humans, but also in other forms of animals, same as with plants. So, makikita natin yung mga yan. May variation. So, another one in sexual reproduction in plants, flowers are the beautiful part of plants that gives as the visual attraction. So many people visit parks and forests to see plants and flowers. You may be familiar with the famous gumamela flowers. Yes, we know. What is the English of gumamela flower? Hmm? Okay, hibiscus. So hibiscus is a gumamela, so with a variety of colors, and rose flower, which has red color and good smell. So how plants produce flower and why? So in this part, we will find out. Okay, so in sexual reproduction of plants or in plants, the flower is the reproductive organ of flowering plants. So, kapag ito ay ornamental plants, meaning to say, namumulaklak siya, automatically, the flower is the reproductive organ. Okay, so flowers have structures that produce the gametes necessary for reproduction. Let us look at the reproductive parts of a gumamela flower. So, we can also see the function of each part. Then, a flower is also composed of non-reproductive parts. Uh, pwede natin sabihin accessories niya. These are the petals and sepals. Then, some flowers contain both male and female reproductive parts. Such flowers are called bisexual flowers, meaning to say it has the female part and then the male part of the flower. Complete, okay, complete reproductive organ of a flower. So, an example of this one is the hibiscus flower or the gumamela flower. So, we have here the female part and then the male part of the gumamela. So, when we are talking about the female part of the gumamela flower, that is the pistil. Okay, so the pistil is composed of stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. Do not forget that female pistil. While on the other hand, the male part of the gumamela or the hibiscus flower is the stamen. Okay, then the stamen is composed of anther, filament, and then the pollen grain. So the pollen grain serves as the sperm cell or the seed, okay, to produce the fruit in the flower or to make the flower uh, fertilized. So we can see here the cross section of a flower, of the gumamela flower. We can see here one of the accessories or the non-reproductive part of the flower, the receptacle, the petiole, the sepal, and petals. So petals are often large and colored to attract insects. So 
the brighter the color or the colorful the flower is, it has a lot of chances na makapag-attract sila ng insects. So, yun yung kanilang usage or yung purpose nila to attract insects para mapag-undergo sila ng process of reproduction. Kasi kung wala yung mga pollinators na yun, wala yung mga insects na yun, they will never reproduce. So, sepal protects the flower while in the bud. So, nagiging protection ang sepal. So, uh, male and female parts of a flower. So, we can summarize here in the reproductive structure in these two boxes. So, the male parts and function. Stamen is the male reproductive part of a flower. Anther produces pollen grains which is developed sperm. Then we have filament. It supports the anther. So, this is very important. While on the other hand, female parts of a flower and its functions. Pistil is the female reproductive part of a flower. Stigma is a sticky pollen receptive part of the pistil. Style is the stalk of the pistil down which the pollen tube grows. Ovary contains the ovules and becomes the fruit, while ovule becomes the seeds when sperm cells fertilize the egg. So, tatandaan, ovary, ito yung nagiging fruit meat. Ovule, ito yung nagiging seeds. Okay? Ovary becomes the fruit meat while the seed is the ovule. Okay? Then, most important part of the plant reproduction or in flower reproduction of plants is that pollination. So here, pollination is the act of transferring of pollen, you know, the pollen grains, from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. And this transfer can be accomplished by the abiotic agents. So pag sinabi natin abiotic agents, these are the non-living things or non-living factors that can affect the pollination. So we have wind, water, but the majority of pollination is affected by animal pollinators. So pollination can be self-pollination and cross-pollination. If the pollen grain lands on the stigma of the same flower, it is called self-pollination. If the pollen grain of a flower lands on the stigma of a flower of the same or another flower of the same type, it is called cross-pollination. So this is an example of self-pollination and this one is a cross-pollination. Okay? And then also in pollination, the goal of every organism, including plants, is to create offspring. So for the next generation to survive. And one of the ways that plants can produce offspring is by making seeds. So seeds contain the genetic information to produce a new plant. Flowers are the tools that plant use to make their seeds. So this can be done through fertilization. So ito kapag yung pollen grain bumagsak na dun sa loob ng stigma, pumunta na dun sa style, dun sa pollen tube, napuntahan niya na doon yung ovary, and then when the egg meets the pollen grain as the sperm, so it is now become a fertilized one. Then that is when the time the flower will die, then the fruit will now exist. Okay, so the fruit meat is the ovary and then the seed is the ovule where the genetics is located. So in plants, pollination is followed by fertilization. Once the pollen grains are deposited on the stigma, it forms the pollen, it forms in the pollen tube. So inside the ovule, the pollen tube releases two male gametes into the embryo sac, and then the male and female gametes fuse together to, to form a zygote. So the zygote divides several times to form an embryo inside the ovule. So the ovule develops and forms a seed, while the ovary forms into a fruit. And so this is the process. We have pollination, fertilization, growth and development, then ripening. So it is a cycle from flower to fruit. Always remember this. All fruits came from flowers, but not all flowers turns into fruit. Always remember that. So sexual reproduction in humans and animals. Humans and all animals that reproduce sexually have reproductive cells. 
called gametes. Gametes are so gametes are formed during meiosis, the sex cell division, and come in the form of sperms produced by males and eggs produced by females. So when the conditions are favorable, sperm and egg unite in the process known as fertilization, internal fertilization by the way. When these two gametes combine during fertilization, the result is a zygote which then continues to develop into an embryo. So we have here the egg or the ovum which has 23 chromosomes, then the sperm, which has also 23 chromosomes when they meet in the fallopian tube. So the zygote is being formed and then it will divide, divide, and divide. So it has 46 chromosomes at this time until such it now develops into an embryo as this one. Okay, so pag sinabi natin internal fertilization, sa loob nangyayari yung fertilization, right? That is why it is internal. Pag external naman, sa labas. So for example, other forms of fishes, frogs. So ang frogs, ang ginagawa nila, nagre-release lang sila ng sperm and ng egg cell doon sa tubig mismo. So doon na sa tubig, magbingit yung egg cell at sperm cell nila. That is external fertilization. Lesson number four. So we have the comparison of asexual and sexual reproduction with the use of this table. So the basis of comparison, we have asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Number one, number of organisms involved in asexual, one parent needed. Sexual reproduction, two parents are required to mate. Cell division, cell divide by fission, budding or regeneration or mitosis in nature while sexual reproduction requires meiosis. Then types. Hello. So in types, budding, vegetative reproduction, fragmentation, spore formation includes in asexual reproduction. Then we have synagamy and conjugation in sexual reproduction. Involvement of sex cells, no fusion of gametes in asexual, Fusion of gametes in sexual reproduction. Organisms involved. In asexual, we have unicellular organisms and in some plants. And then in sexual reproduction, we have multicellular or higher vertebrates and all vertebrates. Higher invertebrates, rather. So, pag sinabi natin invertebrates, they are the organism that doesn't have the spinal column. And then vertebrates, those who have backbones. So, unit of reproduction in asexual may be whole parent body or a bud. So, pwedeng isang buong parte na yun ng parent or yung part lang yung bud. Or a fragment or a single somatic cell. Somatic cell is a body cell. Then, sexual, we know sex cells or gametes. Next, we have characteristics of offspring. Identical with the parents that is in asexual. Not identical with the parents because it has a variation that is sexual reproduction. Number of offspring produce two or more in asexual, one or more in sexual. Advantages in asexual, it is time efficient, no need to search for mate, it requires only less energy. Then the advantages of sexual reproduction, it has variation, uniqueness, organism is more protected. Okay. While the disadvantages in asexual are no variation if the parent has genetic disease, so all the offspring or all the babies of the next generation has that kind of disease. Offspring does too, like what we have said a while ago. So on the other hand, in uh, sexual reproduction, we have... We know that it requires two organisms and requires more energy. Okay, so these are the things to remember in our week number five. So organisms, that number one, must reproduce to continue their kind. Kung hindi, magkakaroon ng extinction, katulad ng mga rhinoceros. So ang mga white rhinos natin dito or gray rhinoceros natin dito, we only have two Uh pairs, pero pareha silang female. So, yung male, namatay na siya. So, ang ginawa nila, kinuha nila yung sperm cell nung gray rhino na yun. Then, pinireserve nila. Then, i-inject nila yun para makag 
nagkaroon pa ng mga susunod na mga gray rhinoceros kasi dalawa na lang sila. Okay, so yun yung pinaka-importante sa reproduction. We must continue the generation. We must continue to reproduce for us not to be extinct. Then number two, there are two modes of reproduction. These are asexual and sexual reproduction. Number three, asexual reproduction gives rise to offspring that are identical to the parent, parehas na parehas. Number four, modes of asexual reproduction includes vegetative propagation, fission, budding spore formation, regeneration. Number five, individuals that reproduce through sexual reproduction needs two parents, a male and a female that produces egg cells and sperm cells. And number six, sexual reproduction gives rise to offspring that are a combination of the traits from its parents. So in this case, if you do not have any question, you need to answer the following. So you all you need to do is to watch and rewatch this video to review and answer all the questions in your module in your Google Classroom. This is our week number five. Do not forget to answer all of your modules, okay? So for lesson number one, answer pretest that can be found in pages three to four, six to eight, and twelve. For lesson number two, answer pages fourteen to fifteen. For lesson number three, answer pages nineteen to twenty and page twenty-three. For lesson number four, answer pages twenty-five to twenty-six and the post test that can be found in pages twenty-seven to twenty-eight. So if you do not have any questions or queries about this lesson. You cannot uh, go directly to me or you cannot go directly to the school. You can reach me through my different social media accounts. So here. Okay, so that's the end of our week number five. And uh, next week, we will be having our last week discussion. So that is the last topic that we are going to discuss for second quarter. Because on March, that is our third quarter so i hope you learned something today about sexual and asexual reproduction and have a nice day goodbye i'm mr daryl del mundo signing off have a nice day and god bless you all